Hey, it's Lewis Beasy from PCAddicts.com, YouTube.com, and whatever .com channels you can find me on. Now today we're continuing our multi-part series on microphones and audio. In the previous series, we actually covered the basics of microphones. We kind of discussed the difference between the most commonly used microphones, and we kind of gave some examples so you can actually hear with your own ears. In this session, session two, we're going to cover two very, very important pieces, or should I say two very, very important devices that really, really play a huge role into making your audio sound that much greater. That's right. It really does make your audio sound that much greater. I just said that, didn't I? Okay, so let's waste no time and let's jump right into it. So if you chose your microphone of choice from the last series and now you're just ready to plug it in and make it happen, Captain, right? <laughs> no, no. You're not there yet. Slow down, soldier. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. No. Now, there are plug-and-play microphones that you can just plug right up and start using right off the bat. USB microphones to be specific, but this audio series isn't about just plugging up and playing. It's about achieving the best sound that you can achieve. So, no further ado, let's learn two more pieces of equipment that's going to help us achieve that professional and great quality. This brings us to our first device, the compressor. Now a compressor does exactly what the name implies. It compresses audio. Truthfully, this is one of the most important keys to great sound in audio. And I can guarantee you that 99.9% .9 of the time, the audio you hear on television or on the radio has compression. That is, a compressor was used or is being used in the audio chain. We'll talk more about that shortly. You see, just having a microphone is like taking an instance of sound and just throwing it out there. When we communicate via speech, our vocal volume fluctuates. Some words or sentences are louder than others. Now, sometimes this is okay because the increase in depth and volume helps define our intended expression. However, this can also lead to distortion, clipping, and other annoying errors in the recording field. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why in the world would I need a compressor while recording or broadcasting? Well, let me answer that. So the audio that you are hearing can be relayed at a consistent level while maintaining the difference of normal and loud. Think about it. When you're watching a video or listening to your favorite CD, at the beginning of a song, a singer's vocal volume usually starts off soft and pseudo. As the song reaches its climax, the singer's voice reaches a louder volume. However, even when a singer is practically screaming into the mic while maintaining a note, the overall volume does not sound any louder in volume as any other part of the song. This is because the compressor is keeping those very loud decibels at a specified level. Dynamic controls are a very important key to acquiring great audio quality in recording and broadcasting. Now before we actually move on to our second device in this series, I want to make sure you guys actually understand the basics of what a compressor does. So what better way to do that than to give you a real life example, right? <laughs> Roll that beautiful being footage. You are listening to my vocals uncompressed. You may notice a difference and you may not notice a difference. In any event, you are listening to my vocals uncompressed. You are listening to my vocals with compression. You may notice a difference. You may not notice a difference. In any event, you are listening to my vocals with compression. So hopefully you were able to hear and understand the compressor working in those examples. It's pretty simple. Just remember this. A compressor takes those parts that are too loud and brings it back down to a more comfortable tone. A compressor it compresses. Some example that was. So this brings us to our second device, which is a mixer. Now you're probably wondering, what is a mixer and what does a mixer do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, actually you didn't ask. You're probably wondering. I'm the one who's relaying the fact that you asked. Anyways, a mixer does exactly what it names implies. It mixes multiple audio sources and it also gives you control over the dynamics and tone of each audio source individually. Yeah, maybe a little confusing. Maybe. Put it this way, let's say you want to pre-record or perhaps you just want to do a live broadcasting and let's say you have your vocals, some background music, and maybe some sound effects. Now it would be ideal if you placed each one of those sources on its individual track or maybe a separate channel. And here's why. Perhaps you would want to turn your background music up and down. You would want to do that without affecting the volume of the other two sounds. Or maybe your vocals need some more bass or treble. You would want to add bass or treble to that, sim to that single source and not the other sources. This is what makes a mixer so, so useful. You can mix multiple sources and then you can edit and tweak those individual sources individually. 
Now, a mixer isn't really a requirement if you're going to be only using one microphone. However, having one does make life easier when you have multiple audio sources and having one around provides scalability for you in the future. A simple ideal setup will look something like this. Your microphone connects to the preamp or compressor. Then the output of the preamp will lead to your sound card. The output of the sound card connects to your computer. Now, a simple ideal setup with a mixer will look something like this. Your microphone will connect to your preamp or compressor, assuming your mixer doesn't have one built on board and you're using that. Then the output of the preamp and compressor goes to the input of the mixer. The output of the mixer goes into your sound card, which is connected to your computer. Now for the sake of keeping this complex subject simple, I won't go into details on all the functionality and features of these devices, you know, understanding the knobs and what this button does and what that button does. Instead, I want you guys just to understand how these devices work. I want you to understand the basics and what they actually do because once you understand that, then you can more accurately apply them to your solutions and use them the way that they're supposed to be used. Understanding the basics of each device will go a long way. Remember, a compressor takes the loud peaks in an audio signal and brings it down to a more pleasing level. This gives your overall sound a more stable and controlled tone. A mixer mixes multiple audio sources and allows you to tweak the dynamics, volume, and harmonics of each sound individually. Now in our next series, we'll take what we learned in the first two series and put it to use. Then you'll really see how the magic happens. Till next time, I'm Lewis Beasley. Sound you later.